Secrets with Ethi and Aga. My name is Ethi and Onobu, and this is my gorgeous co-host, <laughs> Aga Waneri. Today, in an effort to educate and empower our audience, we will be discussing one of Aga's practice areas, bankruptcy law. We're going to talk about the five common misconceptions of bankruptcy. We have another video with my uh, practice area, family law, where we discuss the five family law myths. We'll link it in the description box. Right. Okay, so let's get into it. Bankruptcy, five common myths. Myth number one, bankruptcy is for the irresponsible. Many people believe that bankruptcy filings are for people who are morally or ethically deficient, people who had no intentions of repaying their debts, or people who are using their bankruptcy to defraud their creditors. In the vast majority of cases, this could not be further from the truth. Many people find themselves needing to file for bankruptcy due to a sudden illness or due to medical bills that ensue from that illness. Many people turn to bankruptcy due to divorce or job loss. People in these situations deserve our compassion and support, not our judgment. Absolutely. I've definitely heard that myth. A question that I have, is there a way to kind of educate someone um, who's going through a bankruptcy to make sure that they don't end up in this situation again? That's a great question. One thing that I need people to understand is that every bankruptcy filer must successfully complete a debt management course okay. prior to filing their case. This will help ensure that the filer is financially literate and it could help them avoid a second bankruptcy filing. Okay, that's great. I know as you're doing this, this is a resource for people, but right. also something to keep you from getting that so that you're not in the same situation again. It's kind of like educating. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they must, we are working to get them financially literate even though they're in this place of financial ruin. Yeah, because I don't think anybody wants to be in that place. Absolutely. All right, let's get into myth number two. Bankruptcy will permanently tank your credit. Bankruptcy will not permanently ruin your credit. In fact, many filers begin receiving credit card offers within days after their bankruptcy discharge. Yes, your credit will be negatively affected by bankruptcy within the seven to 10 years following, but your credit doesn't stay stagnant. It continues to grow even during the duration of your bankruptcy. Okay, oh, wow. you know, one thing that I always thought is that bankruptcy was like a death sentence mm -hmm. for your credit, so that's not true. It's not true at all. How long does um, a bankruptcy filing take? That's a great question. So a Chapter 7 filing takes about four to six months. Okay. Whereas a, uh, four to six months to get to discharge. Okay. Whereas a Chapter 13 takes three to five years. Okay. All right, let's get into myth number three. Married couples must file together. This is not true. You do not need to file a joint bankruptcy with your partner. If the debt is primarily yours, you may file an individual bankruptcy filing with no impact to your spouse's credit. Wow. <laughs> Uh, that's mind-blowing to me. <laughs> what about if you file taxes together? That's a great question. No matter what your filing status is uh, uh, regarding taxes, it doesn't have an impact on your bankruptcy filing. Okay. If the debt is primarily yours, you may file an individual bankruptcy filing, even if you file taxes jointly with your partner. Interesting. Yeah. All right, let's get into myth number four. It's okay to rack up debt right before you file for bankruptcy. This is not true, and I do not recommend it. Going on a spending spree, then filing for bankruptcy within three months of your filing amounts to fraud according to the court. Fraudulent purchases will not be discharged in bankruptcy. Even if you, be, even if you happen to make high cost luxury purchases more than three months out from your filing, your creditors may make an argument that you have fraudulent intent. If it is three months out though, they need to make that, they need to prove that in court. Okay, so what is deemed a fraudulent person, purchase? Yeah, so any purchase made within three months of bankruptcy filing or any high cost luxury purchases made more than three months out of a filing has the uh, presumption of fraud. Okay, and what is the consequence of a fraud finding? Great question. So if you are fa uh, found to uh, make fraudulent purchases ahead of your bank bankruptcy, uh, the bankruptcy petition may be thrown out okay. or the filer may uh, be responsible for that purchase and that purchase would not be discharged through this bankruptcy. Okay, interesting. All right guys, let's get into myth number five. You cannot file for bankruptcy more than once. Many people believe that bankruptcy is a once in a lifetime deal. The truth is just as financial crisis can hit more than once, so can bankruptcy relief be given more than once. In the case of a chapter seven, you can file again eight years later. Okay. Chapter 13, you can file right after your first one is discharged within, and that's three to five years. Interesting. So I know that you can file more than once, but is there a limit to how many times you can file? 
That's a great question. So there is no number limit. It certainly doesn't look good to file 12 times, <laughs> uh, but you are limited to your lifespan. You have to stay within the, the year set. So chapter seven, every eight years, chapter 13, every three to five years. Okay, so we're doing some multiplication here. <laughs> yes. And I guess it just depends on how long you live. <laughs> exactly. Long life to all. Yeah. All right, so it's been fun busting these myths for you. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in Ethie's video regarding family law misconceptions. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Goodbye.